I couldn't make the Friday show. I couldn't make tape on a Friday because I was shooting something for something for Born and Raised. Born and, and Raised, streetwear. Streetwear Empire. You said you were going to go Monday, but then you pulled out over the weekend and said, you know what, guys? I have to I have to talk to uh, a couple people about what carrots are and how you cook them for about 16 hours. And I can't spare 20 minutes to pop in my own podcast. It's on my own channel on the Maddie Matheson YouTube channel um, that has uh, that you co-host. So mm. what I did, uh, as people know by now, is I, 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 I dropped someone in in your place, uh, Andrew, the boy, and the boy. Um, and uh, me and Andrew went in on everything uh, ranging from graffiti to police to uh, uh, art in women's homes to, mm. um, I mean, we, we covered a whole range. And we had, uh, we had Pog Nation on. I don't know why I'm doing a wrap-up of, of the past podcast. I, I, just, I don't know, because I don't watch our podcast, so I, I wanna, this is great for me. You of all people need to know. I like this. This is the best thing that's happened to me like all week. This is the I'm most... just sitting here being like, this is so nice. You talked about cops. You talked about graffiti. You talked talked. There's their art in women's homes. Um, Pog? Pog who? Pog Nation. I love Josh, a Pog. Joshua Henderson. Do you know what a Pog is? So the game? Like the old the discs, like the little caps. No, not that's P O G. This is P A W G. Oh, butt butt guy. He's a butt guy. He's into butts. I mean, a little chubby chicken. I don't know if he's chubby chicken. Mm. But uh, he's. What in, is that? What's in the background? What is that? Who is that? What is that? A ninja? There's a ninja here. Uh, it's our what guest. Hey, Jody. Oh <laughs> Jody. You have a guest today? Jody, you're running late. We're running late. Can you go in the green room, yeah. aka my kitchen? Take a leak. Take a leak. Okay. Hey, Jody, I apologize. I apologize for the mess. I'll explain it when you get on camera. Uh, it's our guest, our secret guest. Uh, that looks like, literally, that just looks like Jason's brother. It's Jason's brother. Who is uh, that? It's just another another white white man on the show, you know, an overwhelming. <laughs> An overwhelming uh, tsunami of, of white males just There's dominating. There's a tsunami coming, and it's white men. It's coming. Um. So, where are we at? What's what? So what? Why? Uh, why couldn't you do the show? I couldn't do the show, honestly. Um, to be completely transparent, um, I got a last minute, uh, branded thing where I had to shoot like a couple videos and I had to choose to make money over doing this podcast. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Let me ask you a question though. <laughs> to be completely on, I'll be completely on. I'm not even going to make a funny story up. I, I know. I was hoping some I was, money. I was hoping for a whole heap of bullshit, but. You told the true story. Um, <laughs> I'm this is the powerful truth, angels. Jason, can you I need this. This, this podcast so makes him, zero money. Uh, it costs us money. We make no money. I needed to make more money because I've lost so much money. So I needed to make more money. Now you're to now lose. The, now the I hyperbole. need to make more money to lose on this pod. Um, now the hyperbole. Jason. Now the hyperbole machine is starting. Uh, we're not losing money. We pay Jason. We have advertisers. They pay us a little bit of money. Oh, wait. Oh. No, I've lost money on this. I had to pay a lawyer to navigate this stupid contract we have. I had to pay a we lawyer. We have a great contract. I have to pay a lawyer like five grand to do that. To, for, for what? Like, will I ever see that money again? Probably not. <laughs> You'll never recoup that. I'm never going to recoup that five racks. No. When you recoup that, we should do an extra podcast where we bring your lawyer on and then they charge us for having them on. As, as she will yeah they will charge us she'll charge for me for asking that like they charge she you would, they, yeah she's charging you right now speaking about speaking her of, on the fucking po lawyers 100 percent. I, I don't that's why i don't talk about my lawyer on the podcast you don't say your she'll lawyer yeah me. i didn't say their name but they're charging me i'm gonna stop talking about the lawyer because I'm, I'm losing more money um <laughs> Lawyers always win. They're the only ones that ever win. You got a yellow um, hat. What's your what's your hat? What's going on with your hat? I can't see it. What is it? It's yellow. It's blown out from our, the horrible lighting that my team does. Um, it's Uncle Polly's hat. It's just a Uncle Polly's hat. Uncle Polly. L.A. Hat. I miss L.A. I miss my friends. I miss L.A. 
You know, living on the farm, growing vegetables is cool and all. Having children, cool. Beautiful wife, about to have another kid, all my cool. You know what I wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. Not to cut you off, but uh, the the no cut me off. Borat is uh, made another new movie. movie. You already everyone knows. I saw that. You know what's crazy? Yeah. You know what's crazy about that? Yeah. I'm in that movie. Bullshit. I swear to God. He duped you. <laughs> he duped me. Did he? I was, uh, he I did. came to Fort Erie. Yeah. He came to Fort Erie and me and all my white friends, were, we got duped pretty bad. No shit. Yeah. You we got duped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is, this he is finally a, got me. This, this, this <laughs> that's what a, happened. This is On Borat 2, it's the dismantling of the ultimate white cis male, right. Maddie Matheson. And he finally got me to say, he thought, he was like, no, he got me, he put on DMX and, right. uh, and I just, I, I, I lost control. Right. It was like how they, it was like how they torture, uh, soldiers by playing, like how they torture the enemy by playing like cradle death of filth metal. Or yeah. like death metal. He just played yeah, just DMX on, like, on a loop for 16 <laughs> hours until you just were like, what's my name? And you just blew up. <laughs> and, and then I do it. And then, and then he was just like, thank you. Bye. And I was like, what? The final what? cancellation of uh the final it's a, it's a documentary on the final cancellation of the performative maddie matheson at least you have a farm and you can grow some food and you can cook it and uh you know somehow live live the life that you were meant to live which is just to be a hillbilly on a farm i think yeah. it's it's where i belong you know my brothers are complete hillbillies and i yeah. love them very much yeah we're just going to get the whole matheson clan over and we're going to grow some shrimp yeah make a little <laughs> shrimp pond yeah a shrimp and pond. fucking just you know get a shrimp a local shrimp pond going and you know just grow get the gmos flip my organic farm into just a heavy gmo soybean factory oh yeah spray that shit down don't it. don't fuck around you need you need more pesticides you need more chemicals Spray everything mm. down. Spray down the kids. Spray down the wife. Just coat everything in a fine 3M film. Just, just milk? Put GMO into the milk? Yeah, the Monsanto the fuck. Monsanto your private farm. And just like you want people growing horns. So I sub... Yeah. I, listen, Jason and I... Let's this is ratchet back a few. Jason has... Uh, Jason is, is suffering from stress-induced nausea. And from what? This shitty podcast? Like what's stressing him out? I think Editing it, a fucking podcast? Well, he's been under a lot of pressure. We had to shoot a bunch of podcasts in a short amount of time. You know, I'm always advocating for the worker. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, oh. I'm trying to protect this man who's working hard. He, he, he confessed to me that his diet is shit and he knows that it altered his mood. And I said, I he said, let me, Del Taco? I said, let me guess Taco Bell. He goes, yes. And, uh, you know, nothing is worse than Taco Bell and stress together. It just creates the ultimate, just like storm in your brain. Do you and think is he jerking off a lot? Like is he like releasing himself a lot? He has too? A, he has a girlfriend. Not that that stops anything, but No. What's your that, where, that where has you, nothing to do making love and jerking off are completely different he's things. He's a young man. What are your J off levels like, uh young young Jesselnick? Are you twice a day minimum? Young Nelk Lord. Huh? It fluctuates. Well, what kind what are we talking about? From here? the stress? Well, it just fluctuates with like a natural cycle. Don't look me tell him not to look me in the eyes when he talks about his JOs. <laughs> Look! Look to the side when you talk about jerking it. <laughs> talk to the talk yeah. to. Uh, <laughs> how many a day? I mean, two max. Okay, see, that's I. I tricked him because two a day is crazy, right? And I, I said how crazy? I didn't say how many a week. I said how many a day. He said two max. Two a day? You're putting up two number. Two max seems like that's a low max. I feel for you. Um. Let's say un unhinged Maddie on the road. How many are you getting off? Minimum three. Okay, you guys are perverts. You guys are, you guys are, the wheels broken Why? inside your sex minds. Because it's a lot, no, man. No, but At it's this like, age, I, I, it's, no, I need to, like, if I need a reset, fucking yeah. reset, you know? You set right. it up, you knock it down, you fucking get a reset, a couple breaths after, you know? And then you get your fucking shit together, you know? You knock it off. You knock it out. So, he he's got a he's got stress induced nausea. He's eating Taco Bell. He's a mess. He posted he made he made the he made the edits in the show the Andrew show. He posted it late, um, but I'm gonna say this: having Andrew Andrew on, just launched his own podcast. Andrew is a machine. Andrew Andrew's like I'm gonna start my own podcast. I'm like cool. He's like he told me who he's getting on, and I'm like okay cool. I'll see you later. He's just got like it's just like five star guests. Like it's ridiculous. 
Um, and yeah, you know, guess who will get? He, he has the same guess as us. No, we're five stars. No, he's gonna get like Sasha Baron Cohen. Like you know, he's gonna have like you know Harrison Ford and. He's actually gonna get Sasha Baron Cohen. Sam Jackson. Um, in character. I think he actually is gonna get Sasha Baron Cohen. I think. I don't want to blow up his shit. He can get whoever he wants. He's the coolest guy in the world. He's you the know best. That. He's That's the why best. You had him. He crushed. He crushed on the show. He was very. It was interesting because I, I, you know, I actually was doing the podcast and I was like in the middle of the podcast. I'm like, oh, I'm actually podcasting. I'm actually having a conversation with someone that wants to have a conversation with me and actually has a has a dialogue back and forth. Like he actually looked at me and said, he would ask me questions and say, what do you think about this? And I was like, this is really bizarre. And I realized that it was maybe the first time I've ever actually podcasted. See, I don't understand if you're trying to like hit me down or if you are saying that I'm like inept or I don't understand because I try to ask you questions all the time about your life and all you do is ramble off about streetwear. Ask me a question. Uh, fuck. Like, um, just, um, where'd you get your shirt? There's a new born and raised drop in two weeks. Be sure to get online. Born and raised dot com. Streetwear, streetwear, street life, fashion. Boop, boop, boop. Anyways, um, excess, excess, excess. Um, uh, before we get into our guests, I'm going to do a little, should I, every, right now, if you look outside, this, the sky is beige. Uh, it started out orange this morning. The sky literally smells like barbecue sauce. Like I, I woke up oh this morning, God. I felt like I ate a bag of barbecue fucking lays, right? It's, it's nasty out here. Um, and it's ashy. It's, it's there's ash everywhere. I mean, there's there's ashes. There's there's shitty air quality as far as Pennsylvania. This shit is fucked right now. Um, a casualty in one of these fires. My old man. Uh, you know, we've talked about him from time to time. At one point, he decided to move to uh, Santa Cruz with his wife and open up a yoga studio. My wife. And uh, My wife. and uh, long story short, uh, fire came through and just was like, I'm gonna take all this shit. Took everything, but left like a chair. So, you know, I started a, I didn't start. I, um, his yoga students uh, started to go fund me and I'm sharing that. I don't know. I don't like to do this. We're going to pump it. We're going to pump We're gonna it. We're going to help Two-Tones dad. Dude, your dad lost his house. It's crazy. It's crazy. And like the fires, it's like, it, it, it's, you know, it's literally unfortunate. It's, yeah. it's unbelievably unfortunate and well, we want to help. And well, the, so if the, you guys out there, yeah. if you fucking people out there watching this podcast, please donate. Um, you know, if you ha happen to have a buck or 50 cents or whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> yeah. every, every, everything matters. Yeah. And, um, you know, two tone, we love two tone. He came from the loins of Mr. Two tone. And, um, you know, we want to, we want to make sure that he gets back on his feet. Cause I, I've, uh, that's, a fucking horrible thing to happen. I wish that upon nobody to have their home burnt to the ground from a gender reveal party. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just think that anything that, you know, all my angels, all our angels out there up in heaven, if we can donate some heaven money and bring it on home, you know, we're going to put up a link and we're going to try to raise as much money as we can for, uh, Big Daddy Two Tones I'm, Dad. I'm curious to see how this goes because all all the all the PTA fans hate me, and so they're gonna try to find a way to un. For all the times that Two Tone has tried to fat shame me, and try to morally <laughs> just decimate me, or or make fun of you know my small penis, or 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 say I've that never, I'm not good at graffiti. Well, those two are true. You never, never said made fun of my little umpati I never I never made fun of your button. All right, I never did that, and uh, you will not. You you, you do suck. At Trisha graffiti. says at least it's straight. Fair, fair. So uh, anyway, back to my penis. Let's raise money for <laughs> Two Tones' dad, who used to have. The, remember, he told that amazing story about when they were moving. He had a bunch of friends um, <laughs> help his dad move, and they found the giant cock ring on on the on the step of the of the of the house. So um, you know, he needs more than a cock ring right now. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, I don't want to reveal that he actually uh, the way he started the fire on his property was that they had a um, a six foot didgeridoo bong that they were lighting with oak leaves, and uh, his wife was lighting the bong, and you know, wind caught the leaves and blew it into a tree, and everything caught on fire. He's actually to blame for all the fires, to be honest. It's not funny. I I, I so can... if you want to, yeah, 
I think I think I think Two Tones Dad actually started the fires, and we need to help him out. He made he made a bad mistake. He 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 went left. You know, he was supposed to go right. He yeah. went left. He took yeah. a bad turn. Yeah. And uh, you know, we need to get some money back in the pockets. It's probably just going to go towards Two Tones relapse My anyway. So he's going to take the money. No, the GoFundMe is it. So. Listen, listen. All that being said, yes, my dad has contributed to the entire downfall. We're just like shredding your dad. <laughs> he's contributed to the entire downfall of the West Coast uh, uh, ecosystem with just one bong load, and uh, and the money will not. The money doesn't go to me; it goes to his, his trusted yoga students, who who I I was going to start my own GoFundMe by checking my dad, and he trusts them, so I'm going to send all the money there. And you know, to be honest, I offer my dad whatever I can give, and he's very. Uh, it's very hard for him to ask for help as it is for me, and uh, this is the best way I can help him right now because I don't have, you know, the I can't just cut a check for that. You know, I give him what I can, but I can't just cut a check for that amount. Contrary to, we'll give him all the proceeds from the show straight up. We give him all the proceeds from the show. Um, well, thank you for sharing that, and uh, let's really get into uh, you know more about Jason's uh, diarrhea. No, we don't need to talk about that. DoorDash, 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 DoorDash. Between never-ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. You want Chinese, they want pizza, and some motherfucker is craving Froyo. That's me. There's something for everyone on DoorDash. Continue supporting restaurants in our community safely. There are thousands of restaurants open for delivery on DoorDash that need your patronage. Now more than ever. Support your favorite restaurant. Support rest your favorite restaurant on DoorDash. You've counted on restaurants. And now they're counting on you. And while their dining rooms may be closed, they're still open for delivery with DoorDash. DoorDash is the app that brings you food. DoorDash you're is the right app that your brings your food and you're craving right now. Right to your door. <laughs> Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat. And your food will be left safely outside your door with the same new contactless delivery drop-off setting. You don't have to touch, see, smell, or look at anybody. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of 15 or more and zero delivery fees for their first month when you download DoorDash app and enter code PTA. Don't forget, that's code PTA for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Thank you, DoorDash. We love you. Thank you. Uh, Jason Jason needs to drink water. I, I bet he, he's one of those guys that only drinks like sport drinks or like things that like are like no calories, but they're filled with calories or like he drinks like Rockstar or some bullshit. Yeah. He has, he, has a, he has a monster energy IV drip at home when he goes to sleep just so he can have sick, yeah, sick exactly. ass dreams. Like the only way jerking he'll off is maximum jerking off maximum two times with his fucking monster energy drink IV right into his fucking balls. Yeah, like the only way he'll ever be able to skate is in his dreams with a monster IV drip, you know. So he just kind of dreams of being Tony Dude. Hawk, the goth I mean, Tony he's got Hawk. A monster energy drink tattoo. He is kind of like a goth Tony Hawk if you look at him. He's not, Dude, he, he looks like, like a bad guy. He literally looks like a fucking extra from that stupid new show Cobra Kai or something. Look at that stupid bandana. Cobra he Kai. Has. Whatever the fuck it is, that stupid fucking karate fucking thing. He is wearing a bandana. It's a preview of it. What? He is wearing a bandana. Dude, he looks like a fucking. He looks like somebody that would steal a kid's BMX. Yeah. Or or he looks like the guy that take not not. Did you just say something about Shepard Fairley? Just not just just don't. What the fuck are you talking about? Have you seen the Snowden uh, the Snowden murders about the Australian? The Australian people who like, uh, they're like these crazy pedophile family that rape and kill these kids. He looks like he could be hanging out with those guys. Like he's Who's Snowden? The Snowdown, Snowtown Murderers. I'm, I'm butchering the name. I'm a little. I'm a little oh, scared. Snowtown Murderers? Yeah. I love that movie. That's a good movie. That's Jason could be one of the kids who's like, you know, come to my house and then he just like rapes you in the bathtub. I thought know? you were talking about Snowden, the Russian spy. Guy. No, 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 Snowtown. Snowtown Murderers, right? That's a, that's a Snowtown dark Town Murderers. That's a good movie. It's a very dark See, movie. I've seen that movie. I think we should, uh, since we started late, I think we should bring in our guest now. Yep. Because he has a small window. And uh, I want to bring He's him He's got in. a small window? Not too small. It's bigger than your window. I'll tell you that much. My window's, dude, I'm wide open right now. I'm wide open today. Okay, we're doing two hours. Done. Okay. Jody. Yeah. Jody. 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 Jody is Maximus. You're over here. 
Uh, Come on in. Jody's here. The seat's warm. The illustrious. Uh, Jody wow. Hill. Wow. Hey, thanks. Jody, thanks, thanks for coming on, Jody. How are you, buddy? That's I'm good, strange. man. How are you? Good, man. Hey, I want to apologize. The house is, is a complete wreck. It looks great in here. I, <laughs> I moved all my office furniture into my bedroom, uh, into my off home office. It's, I'm just, I'm just, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy in here. Two-tone lives like a college student. Where do I look to Maddie? Versus on the screen? That's yeah, cool. okay. Maddie. Well, no, Maddie's actually there. Yeah. He's, the, oh, right. You're going to put... This okay, is me physically. It. I'm here. Jody, just... Right. It, yeah. This is a... Jody, yeah, grab have, my face. Have you ever been on Grab this, my cheeks. At this level, have you ever been on this level of a set, like, professionally? I know you're in... You know, I know you dabble, but have you ever seen anything like this? This is... I mean, <laughs> this is what... Whenever I was growing up in the South, this is what I dreamed of. This, this is what I dreamed of. Yeah. Yeah, high level production. Right this here. is big leagues. Yeah. This is what I dream of right now. Right. <laughs> so I'm, in, I'm living my dream. I'm living my best life. We got we got my best friend Two Tone, uh, Jody Hill. Is he it's your best great, friend? Th- today's a pardon. Is he your best friend? Would you say? He's in my top five. He's, we talk a lot on the phone. He throws that. Out of, I say everyone's my, I'm one of those best friend guys who's like, he's my best friend. I'm like a five-year-old. Right. But it's, it, it, it really, like, I think two-tone, like, we have some very intimate conversations. Um, and, and I talk about my downfalls. I talk about my character defects. I talk about, you know, being sad. I talk about my wife not being happy with me. My ever, wife. But she is. My wife. No, but my wife is happy with me. But I, no. I think that she isn't because I'm a sociopath. Or not a sociopath. I don't know what I am. But two-tone helps me. He yeah. asked, he asked, you ask him a simple question. He starts, starts talking about his wife. Yeah. Are you guys best friends? If you do a Google search, if you do a Google search with Maddie and best friends, 4,000 people come up. I've done it. It's crazy. Everyone is It's Maddie's my LinkedIn. Friend. My LinkedIn is just best friends. Yeah, best, best friends. Well, I'm just yeah. looking for best friends. We're friends. We're good friends. We're that good makes friends. you, I don't feel, know if that makes you feel good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Jody Hill. Um, first off, this is my guest. I brought Jody on. I'm I would like to acknowledge that this is probably, I'm not going to say that you're probably the coolest. I'm so... Uh, I've had some guests on that are my yeah. guests, my friends. And now you're Alex's friend. And um, I think I'm I'm like, Alex really geeked out uh, when we had Eric Andre on. And uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to try to control myself because I'm like, I'm a big fan of, of your work. Oh, thank you, I've never you, man. met you physically. And, uh, you know, when, when Alex said that uh, you liked the pod, I was just kind of like, what the fuck are you oh, talking I love about? Because it. yeah. it's just like, um, I think... Um, Let's just pause on that. One of the sharpest comedic minds, okay, in this generation is a fan of the powerful truth angel. So do with that what you will. Yeah. We're doing something right. Yeah. Jody, Jody doesn't have to. He listen. He doesn't have to listen. Yeah, he, Jody, you do. Tell, tell us how why you like our pod. I like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like. Uh, I can listen to you guys fight for a long time. I um I play poker with Alex, so. Mm. As a friend, I want Alex to win, but mm. I've told Alex this before. He's most entertaining when he's losing, <laughs> and I feel like I feel like you sort of bring that out of him, you know, constantly, yeah. and uh, sometimes literally with poker. But um, yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. talk about that anymore. We don't talk about that. Episode no, we anymore. can talk That's about it. It's still it's still seared into my into my consciousness. So as a that was my as, favorite as thing. As a ever. poker player, yeah. as a poker player. Um, I think. Do Do you think that I I overreacted at the end? Do you think I pushed it too far? Uh for the podcast, no. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if there wasn't cameras on, yeah. I probably I still feel like I would act the same way. You would. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It seemed to work out. <laughs> Jody's such a nice guy. Give him ten minutes before yeah. he starts tearing it you was apart. A, it was a. Li- it might have been a little much for the poker table, but it was. It was. He's know, being charitable. It, is what it, it, it was, was fun. It was fun to watch. It's great. It made for a great show, but yeah. I definitely wanted to kill him. Like yeah. I, I was, I was boiling mad. I, I still haven't recovered from any of that. I've seen Alex annihilate people after he loses at the poker table, so I was surprised at how kind of reserved <laughs> you if, actually what were. What do you mean? Like I've just yelled at people? Yeah, like Pete. Those some of the things you've said to him have been. I, mean, like, I said some horrible things. Oh, terrible! Yeah, yeah terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you're right you're right yeah i just started attacking someone's whole personal yeah. like lifestyle yeah. choices just breaking down their like eyes and right. the shape of their eyes and stuff it's like really bad stuff <laughs> i mean uh, you know it's uh 
it's tough. It's a tough. Uh, it's tough taking those beats, you know. You, and and the 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 thing is, the mastery of a, of a poker player is one who doesn't get upset when he gets his ass fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just really getting to a point where you're like, it's a okay. gentleman's game. Sure, yeah, it's a gentleman's game. And um, you know, we we have a we have an ongoing game uh, that well, they're gonna they're gonna string me up in that chat. For having you, because you know I'm refusing oh. to go to the poker game. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And they're going to say, oh, neither. you have Jody in your house, but you won't come to the poker game. Neither they're one gonna, of us are wearing masks. Yeah, we're not wearing masks. <laughs> they're going to crucify me <laughs> because I've been resistant to go back to playing poker for a couple of reasons. One is uh, it's nine people neck to neck touching things for six hours and touching your face. It just feels weird. It's COVID. Cigarettes. Like, cigarettes. Food. People break for food. Half the people won't wear a mask. You know, they're like, they put, they wear the mask on their chin. They don't believe in it. And I'm still trying to maintain some semblance of like COVID safety. You know, they don't believe in it. I mean, you know, like Maslow just wants to die. Right. You know, he's like, I don't, he's like, take me. He's like, COVID, (laughs) take me away. You know, like, you know, that that scares me because I don't want to die. Like I still want to do things, you know? Yeah. I don't want to die playing poker. You know what I mean? Um, But you know, there's worse ways to go. So yeah. That's Jody's in the game. Uh, we've been playing in the game. He's in the game, man. We've been playing that game for a while. It's uh, it's in our friend Renee's garage, and uh, you know it's fun. It's a good source of it was it was before all this shit happened, you know. But I mean, I feel like at this point, I just like the salt. I like I like poker because I like this. Like I I don't like I'm not a sports guy. I don't know anything about sports. Yeah, I, I really either. enjoy being around buddies. And just like being a like yeah. a kind of a jerk or a fucking like being a loser, and so it's just like. But all my friends back home, I think we're trying to start a game, but they like don't want me to play because I'm annoying, obviously. <laughs> so because I don't care, like because I'm I'm there, I'm like I don't care about your twenty dollar buy ins or like I don't care about like you know I don't I, I just want to be there in the room kind of thing, yeah. which annoys everybody who's taking it very serious and trying to play poker. And then they're just like, I'm like, Hey, is there a poker? This, I feel like they're, they have, we were talking about starting a poker thing. And then yeah. I feel like they started it. And then they, they just tell me that there isn't one. They've edged you home. out. You should come next time you're in LA to this game. Would that I be, would like to oh, come. Alex always thing, goes, right? he always says that he can't do anything. Like I've, I've kind of like nodded at being like, where's, when's the invite? Like I know half the people that go <laughs> yeah. and then it's just like, Alex is always like, no, I'm just, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, no, there's never been room at the table. There's like a, there's a nine person cap. And See, always... once again, fat shaming. <laughs> you, you did it to yourself. <laughs> I just teed that one up for you. you just, you're learning. You're learning to just do yeah. it to yourself. Like I do. Um, no, I mean, like, I think literally I think, not one inch for you. He, he, the thing about Maddie is that he's a dangerous pl- person to play poker with because he doesn't care. Right. He thinks he doesn't, the money doesn't matter to him. He doesn't right. care about playing poker and he'll do whatever he wants at any time and he has no feelings. So right. you can't really beat a guy like that because he'll just like. No feelings. What do you what, mean, no feelings? You, you don't think have I'm a symbiote? A, what's a symbiote? Sociopath? One of those machines from the Matrix. Is yes, it feelings or empathy? No empathy. All right. He has feelings. If I have no him. empathy. No empathy. Or feeling. I watched Django last night. I have empathy. <laughs> did amazing, you, cr- did amazing, you cry? You have empathy for what? What is that fucking segue? <laughs> <laughs> I hate. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? I We're watched, editing that out. <laughs> I watched Django last night. <laughs> Let's talk about Django. This is now a film. I watched podcast. the documentary. I watched the great documentary Django last night. I watched Django again and, recently. Uh, it's a good fuck. It is a good movie. Django is something else. I'll tell you. It is a good movie. It was great. Was it? What'd you say? Was, was why, it a, why are you guys so uncomfortable? Was it a powerful experience? Why, why are you guys both turning red? What do you have to feel guilty for, you sons of bitches? I love that movie. <laughs> Look at the, the patriarchy is crumbling in front of my eyes. <laughs> the power structure is melting. Oh shit. I think it's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Dude, uh, uh this is a film podcast. We have an, we have a, a wonderful director and uh we're going to do we're going to do a deep film discussion. I'm going to preface this with telling you that I'm shocked that this man even knows who you are or what you've done because he doesn't consume anything. Oh. He's never seen nice. a, he, the only movie he's seen is Willow and Foot Fist Way. Right. <laughs> Right? What's the other movie you've seen? Foot Bad Boys 2? Foot Fist Way is my godfather. Oh. 
That's like that's that's <laughs> it's, it's not my gun. That's, 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 <laughs> that's nice you to say. <laughs> For fist way is my Jurassic Park yeah. or like the Godfather. Thanks, man. Like uh, everyone yeah. has to be quiet. You, you dim the lights in your home theater, and like the kids got to shut up. You're like, put fist ways on. <laughs> Dude, I need all my attention. I just love. I I I I love. I love for this way and I love observing reports. Oh, so thanks, fucking man. Much. Thank you so much. And, I appreciate and, it. And, um, nobody did I just when think they came that, out. Like, dude. Yeah. There's no way you can make that, but it, oh, it, it, thanks, it, man. It, it's, but I, it, it's so can we, amazing. Can, like, we, talk, I think it's can just, we talk about observing report? I mean, we yeah, can't, sure, it's a yeah. film. You can go see it. Yeah. So Seth Rogen rapes. It's in theaters now. In that film. <laughs> like wildly, <laughs> like just straight up to like pump someone full of drugs and rapes her. And that's a fucking, you know, that's the level. I mean, there was a series of dark comedies around that time, right? It was like Bad Santa was in yeah, that, yeah, in that, somewhere in that yeah, framework. Yeah, a little bit before, but yeah. A little bit before. Yeah. Like, there was just a series where, like, there was a period where things got very dark before they became sanitized. Yeah. And it's a shame that, you know, we can't experience that stuff anymore because some of that shit is... Wait, wait, let me just check everything. I'm and I don't want to start beef. Right. What am I saying? Hold on, hold on. Let me just let me just. Re- okay, I said rape. No, what the is first, it about? The what first is it about rape? Yeah. Yeah. It None of that's funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. I oh. think, you know what the biggest ripoff is? I think that the Hangover. You know when when homie jumps out the fucking trunk with the little dick? Yeah. And they do the little dick thing. Yeah. They ripped. I swear to God, they ripped that from the fucking. <laughs> cock fucking shower right. in 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 observing report because he's got the little fucking fish stick yeah. and so i swear to god like that that in itself that kind of fucking r-rated comedy it's like you took everything that was great about like <laughs> animal house and all those fucking r-rated fucking movies and you just turned it on like it's just it's it's to me it's a, i love an anti-hero yeah but it's just like it, it is like because i think that i've I'm a, obviously a narcissist, yeah. so I'm like, I'm like, I'm an anti-hero, but it's just like, I love, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I think it's just like the oh, way that thanks. you can yeah. have those. I don't even. Are anti-heroes know. narcissists? I just like honestly, like, yeah, I, My, that, I think the Hangover that, ripped you off. That that uh that guy's Randy. He's a buddy of mine that I went to film school with, and um, he agreed to do that, and I'd never seen him naked before, <laughs> and. <laughs> And like, and you're like, why'd you agree to do yeah, when, when he did it? I was so happy because it's like, yeah, to me, it's like if it's a big, huge penis, there's nothing like, of course, that guy got naked on camera. Oh, it's not a big deal. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A, you know, a small <laughs> that takes such a yeah. Showing your giant cock on film is like it's like, yeah, it's like it's you're bragging. Yeah. You're like, check it out. Oh, yeah. I had to get naked. Yeah. Showing your fucking <laughs> yeah, peanut porn. cock on a movie in a movie that's going to live forever until the end of time is. A wild three commitment. little chickpeas. It's, it's bold. It's a yeah. wild commitment. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's like three little marbles in a giant glass bottle flapping yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever Clanking do uh, around? It's, would you go full frontal for the bag, Maddie? I well, if the price is right. Yeah. The next. I would have to believe in the project. I think, you know, I think the same scale. kind of thing. Like I think of it. <laughs> observe, if I was in the observe, zone. Observe and report two. <laughs> Maddie's dilemma. Observe and report two. Yeah. Just that's my only scene is yeah. me running naked. It, like yeah. <laughs> for no reason. There's like a naked chef. He gives you forty racks. Like, <laughs> let's see that dinky. Um, yeah. Let me see the. Di- I don't know. I think so. I. It would. Once again, it's like I. I wanted like, it's um, you know, I think nudity is beautiful. Every shape, every size. <laughs> yeah. It's society that tells us we're wrong. Right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think I would. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm not, straight on that. I'm not a naked person, really. Yeah. I'm not trying. <laughs> no, what, no, no. How old were you when you wrote your first screenplay? <laughs> um, I guess I wrote my first screenplay probably in college. I might have tried in high school, but college, I think I finished. And um, Fufus Way, I was 28 when I made that. Wow. That, was, that was my first film. And how long? What was that process like? Um, I put that film on my credit cards. That was my, um, so I sick. saved for like four or five years to make some movie. And, um, yeah, that was it. Before that I worked in, when I moved out here, I worked in reality TV, which is 
for like the road rules and real world, <laughs> those kind of shows. It's terrible. <laughs> but uh, that's how I say, that's how I say money for the movie. What did you do for those shows? I was ran the story department. I was a story editor then I ran the story department. So were you ever on set or you just, you were just in pre No, I would be on set a little bit to like take notes okay. and stuff. <laughs> like people used to fuck with me and call me like the note taker. Cause really? I would just sit around and yeah, take notes. Do you take notes on like what the new storyline would be? Yeah. Like what they're fighting about. And, and a lot of that shit was manufactured. It's a, it's not okay. So like if they do something on screen, it's not, you know, you have to show that, um, like you can't fake that. But like a lot of times if like you knew a guy liked Beth, let's just use that name. Yeah. And like, he would say something like, um, he would never do an interview about like, I've got a crush on this girl or anything like that. Mm. You would, you would take something he says like, um, I like basketball and you'd find another place where he said Beth and you would sort of put those together so you could no make the shit. love storyline happen. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. just fully like manipulating the facts. We had like fucking just um, Truman show. Yeah. We had like, um, just, they do all these interviews and we, you would have everything transcribed. So you would go through and like highlight the words that would make them say so, like so the, dark. Wow. Yeah. It's like, it's like deep yeah. fakes before the technology was there. Yeah. Just like manipulating That's like crazy. those things of Trump where he goes, I am a person who likes to fuck children yeah. in the mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like where they cut all this shit together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Oh man, I'm not, um, I'm not proud of it. That's amazing. No, that's yeah. great. I mean, humble, humble. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's some people that would have died. I remember when I was in film school, when re when reality TV like started happening, yeah. and there were people who were like, "We're going to reality TV," and that was at a point when reality TV was like the the most disgusting thing you could do. Yeah, and even I was like, "Fucking reality TV, I would never," you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then it basically ended up controlling the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like the the crazy thing. Are is you too, guys upset that it's the last season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Oh God, I heard that. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen, I might've seen pieces of it. I've seen it in passing. I've never watched it. It's just yeah. them kind of being like- I just like, saw on Kim's, on Kim's IG, she just said, it's going to be like, you know, with a heavy heart, it's going to be the last season. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you guys are all billionaires and like, you guys are good now. Yeah, like you guys heart. can, everyone has like, you own like six makeup companies and lingerie and your husband's running for presidency yeah. and like, you're cool now. Like now, now you want to turn the cameras off. Yeah. Like it's kind of like, you're over it. Are you a fan? Uh, no, I like, I like them as just like what they are. I'm yeah. not like a, I like, I like the, um, I like that they fucking, they gripped it and ripped it and made their own fucking world. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like I think Chris Jenner is literally like Chris Jenner is like a mastermind and she used every single thing she had to design her family and create a monster and yeah. they're all billionaires <laughs> and they're horrible people, but they're yeah. probably nice people too. But so I who feel, fucking know. I feel like, uh, you know, the, like, I think it's just like she created a monster and I think that that in a world that you're allowed to create monsters and she did great at her job. Yeah. But there, aren't they also kind of like the heralds of the end of society and in, 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 in large, like the, the idea that, you know, the, they're the gargoyles, the Kardashians own the market share of the internet. If you string all their, like all their shit together, right. If you, they own, they pretty much own the internet, like the followers and just, they have such a huge chunk of the internet. So they're, they're basically controlling, um, or influencing almost the whole world. And oh, so, with their social media. Yeah. And like, yeah. then you have women, like, you know, someone pointed this out to me years ago that every basic girl in LA looks like a Kardashian because it's an easy look. It's like dye your hair black, Lion King makeup, mm. black jeggings, like, <laughs> you know, like and a butt and some tits and you're a Kardashian. Some like, bronzer. Yeah, some bronzer and like yeah. that's it. And like that's the basic package. And the like, white line down the nose. White line down the nose, yeah. Just <laughs> full contour. And and then the thing is like if all you aspire to be is that is just kind of like as a as a person even because it, it goes to men too. Men wear fashion nova. Like, yeah. you know, this shit is- People dress like me all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, far, meth heads and farmers. <laughs> but they they do it because they're poor. You do it because you're rich. I'm from the south, and that's like that's pretty extreme look, even for like down there. Though. Dude, what you, you, dude? Everyone in town like dress it like. Even in my farm, everyone's like, what are you doing? You working hard? <laughs> yeah. Like all my buddies, like I'll see all my buddies who like never left town. Like yeah. I live in a town, literally of 9,000 people. Yeah. And I'll like go to the store and like everyone has like big trucks and like yeah. everyone's like, you know, works trades. You know, and then like I'll get out and everyone's like, hey, Maddie, nice clean truck. And you got some dirty overalls, eh? <laughs> what were you doing? You got to have art Rolling department. Around? You got to have art department spray mud and shit on your on your truck and your and your in your uh, boots. You know what I mean? Just have a guy hose you down with mud yeah. so you come in there and Just where throw, are like eggshells on it and like Where are you stuff. right now, Maddie? 
You're in Canada? I'm in Toronto. I'm You're in my Toronto. office. Uh, yeah, I'm in Toronto. He's so I live like two hours. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You I'm know, in your hat. I'm sitting yeah, next to right. you, <laughs> Jody. You know Jody has a, a picture perfect replica of the General Lee at his house. Yeah, you know the you know the I car like- from Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> where are you from? Where are you from? Are you from Charleston? Or where are you from? <laughs> I, I don't have that. <laughs> he doesn't have that, everybody. <laughs> he's, 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 he's stealing not, all the statues. Yeah. He's Jody's, taking all of the statues. <laughs> he's hoarding. He's hoarding the statues. He's like send them to my house. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, here's a place for you. Here's a place for you. It's the only house in the Hollywood Hills that's just wrapped in a in a in a uh, Confederate flag. Yeah. You can just see it from a helicopter. Can't miss it. <laughs> yeah. He's got his uh, Tesla wrapped in a Confederate flag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, I'm from North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah. North Have you ever, do you know Sam Jones? Sam Jones. Sam Jones. I'm like, do you know Sam Jones? He's 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 an Aiden. He he's an Aiden. In North Carolina, yeah. You know Greg? I don't know if I'm North Carolina. <laughs> no, he's great. He he has you know, one job. You know, I got I know two people. I know like three people in North Carolina. I'm like, you know Sam and Michael. You know Michael Letchworth. He, he lives he's in, a really I, nice guy. When I was a kid, I meet someone from England. I would ask them if they knew someone else I knew from England. Right, I'd be like, yeah. oh, you know Carmen. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, I know her. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? The name is Sam John. Jones. Where'd you grow up in Greensville? <laughs> Sam, Sam Jones. <laughs> you know John Smith? No, he's an iconic barbecue guy. He's an iconic oh. barbecue guy. Oh, really? Um, what town? Yeah, he's like, he does whole hog. <laughs> he's, so, he's like a... <laughs> I like that Jody's he's so being nice. He's, he's being nice. He's being nice. Guy. <laughs> what, what oh, a, what? oh, Maddie. Oh, what high school? <laughs> oh, was he a pasture? <laughs> yes, he was a pasture. <laughs> A pasture. A pasture. <laughs> so So you're from Greensville? Yeah. No, I'm from uh Concord. It's a small town. Oh there. nice. Yeah, right outside of Charlotte. It sure was nice seeing the teams back out on the gridiron over the um PTA. Lucky for us, that was just week one. There's no better place to get in on all the action than DraftKings, the leader. Uh the, it's the leader in one day fantasy sports. To add to this week's excitement, DraftKings has millions of dollars in total prizes up for grabs. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet, head to the app now because you don't want to miss this. Draft your lineup now and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, pass, and catch means more with DraftKings. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching the game. Quite like having a shot at millions of dollars in prizes. DraftKings has paid out billions billions of dollars to winners since 2012, so they know a thing or two about cold, cold, hard hard cash. cash. Download the DraftKings app now and use code PTA for a limited time. New users can get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes this week. Don't miss out on the week two action. Enter code PTA to get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes with your first deposit. That's code PTA only at DraftKings. Make it rain. Make it rain. Money, money, money. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility minimum. Minimum five dollar minimum. Minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility. Eligibility restrictions apply. See draft. Eligibility. (laughs) Eligibility. It's eligibility. Minimum minimum five dollar deposit required. Eligibility. I can't. What is the word? Eligibility. What is the word? Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Eligibility. 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 I love nice. back, I to, back to his first film. The whole thing of putting the film on the credit cards. Right? Yeah. It's like a it's like a time. Like there's two ways to make a movie. You know, and I talk to Jody about this all the time. Right. Because one day I'd like to make a film. And he's like, you know. You either do it yourself and you fund it and you put it on your credit cards or you get someone else to pay for it. And I love mm. the guys that said put their balls on the table and max out their fucking life and put it all into one thing and make the film because you get creative control because no one's going to let you make Foot Fist Way. Right. No studio's going to let you do yeah. it. No one's going to let you uh, take a chance on Danny McBride. Right. right. Like he was unknown at the yeah, time. Yeah, totally. And like no one's going to look at you two guys and be like, these guys can make a funny movie. They're going to be like, fuck off. Like yeah. we're doing the new fucking Jim Carrey vehicle. You know what I mean? Like, and. That's they're like the mask. We're doing the mask. Fuck yeah. doing the mask too. Yeah, yeah they and, should. Right, yeah. they should. Yeah, like they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't believe in these stupid yeah. projects. But then you have equity in the thing that you built, and it's like your thing. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, 
I just copied like what other guys did. Like yeah. I was like, well, how do you make a film? And yeah. I didn't, coming from North Carolina, I didn't know anybody out here. It wasn't like I had an uncle or cousin who was at a right. studio or something. Right. So, um, yeah, like Gus Van Zant, you know, yeah. all these kind of guys Robert who Rodriguez, had like, yeah, who had Spike, done this. Yeah, I was like, well, Spike, how did they get started? Uh, Spike Lee, yeah. And it was like, oh, they all just paid for it themselves. Yeah. I mean, that's really, you know, yeah. and you talk, you know, I, we have a lot of friends that direct commercials and like these guys are like, they all, every commercial director has a film they want to make, right? Right, yeah. But they're all really wealthy from making commercials and they're yeah. like, I can't figure out how to make my film. I'm like, bro, just take a couple hundred grand out and make a low budget film. Yeah. Like, Fuck it. No yeah. one's gonna. Yeah, just take a couple hundred grand out. What if, are you talking about? If you're you guys get credit cards for that much? If you're a commercial director, you got money in the bank. You're good. Like you're. Yeah. If you're oh, wow. a thriving commercial, am I wrong? Well, no. My first film cost, I think, thirty five grand to get it shot. Holy, so, like, that's and as that much was, as fucking, you shot Foot Fist Way for thirty five grand. Yeah, just shoot it. It costs more once we. It might have been like, like post production. Yeah, once you get into post production, it was more. But like to get in the can, and that was on um, sixteen millimeter. I mean, there wasn't really, they oh, had wow. digital back then, but nobody was really doing it, you know? So you what, shot it on film. What yeah, year was that? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. I was 28, so what, uh, 2005 maybe? Wow. Yeah. And you shot on 16, so, so like you yeah. had to you had to process a film to make sure you got the <laughs> shot, like check the yeah. gate the whole night. All the deal, yeah. Fuck, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's we, shot, cool. we shot Eastbound on film too. You did? Yeah, whole thing. Yeah. What? I can't. You know, we were like one of the whole last thing comedy of shooting. On film. Yeah, yeah. Started out on sixteen. Then we Is that an integrity thing or like just like you're fucking? Let's do it. It was like we, yeah, we fought for that real hard, um, and then we sort of caved with. Our, we didn't cave with our other shows. It's just things have gotten actually a lot better now, so it's not as much of a compromise. But right. at the beginning, I thought it was a compromise. Yeah, like the just beginning. Gemstones, those, gemstones on film? No, no, no. no. <laughs> like those beginning, like those early. That's on expensive 8K cameras. Yeah, that's, that's like, yeah. yeah. Those, uh, those early Michael Mann movies that he was the first guy doing digital, and you can yeah. tell it's digital because yeah. it didn't look filmic yet. Yeah. And you're just like, there's something wrong here. They look weird. Yeah. You know? But now it's They're just They're cool, like you can't, but. Yeah, you can't uh, tell anything. You, can, you can't even tell, you can tell the difference. Yeah. I hate good TVs. You hate good, good TVs? TVs? Like, like high def TVs always like bum me out because I don't understand what the fuck they are. Yeah. I know it looks like you're watching like a British reality TV show or something, right? Like a, a weird soap opera. Because sorry, one of my oldest friends just walked into my office and I haven't seen him in like years. Oh, he's just like, like I'm talking and I'm just like he's just making fun of me. <laughs> sorry, he's like, oh, you do a podcast about TV. Here, kung fu, come on, come on, walk into the room, watch this. This is this is literally one of my oldest friends. This is here, come in here. Hey, see, he's got. Look at that guy. Ooh. This is Stephen Payne, one, one of my one of my best friends, one of my oldest friends. Hi, Stephen. That's Jody Stephen. and Two Tone. You, you're one of Maddie's four thousand best friends. Oh, guys. <laughs> hey. Hey. <All> right. <laughs> Wolf dog. <laughs> He's got a hot dog company. He sells homemade hot dogs. Oh, nice. Best dogs in Toronto. All right. Best dogs in Toronto. He's uh, he's an alcoholic. No, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> This is part of being Canadian, right? Look at the hot dogs! Look at the hot oh, dogs! <laughs> All right, Rue. I'll see you soon. Okay. Wow, cool guest, Sorry, man. He, you see my an, guest? He... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, your guy's, he, he, he directed The Godfather 3. Uh. And uh. I got a guy who makes hot dogs. <laughs> it's The Godfather uh, 3. Even Steven. Like a... Even Steven. Yeah. Godfather, okay, Godfather 3 is like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> you know they're re-releasing it. He recut it. You I heard that? about that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. He re yeah. I like the helicopter scene. Yeah. Oh, is that that's in 2 where they shoot up the the resort? That's in 3? Isn't that's number 3? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah, shoot yeah, up yeah, the yeah. the the meeting. Yeah. Godfather's like a Christmas movie for my fan. We I always end up watching like the Godfather series like around Christmas. I think it's just time consuming. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk, so we do that. What's your favorite? What is your, you know, like what was the movie that made you want to make that you that made you, uh, like think that you could make Foot Fist Way? Oh, um, not shit. I don't know. I mean, whenever I was in middle school, me and my buddy went just like discovered Robert De Niro, and started watching all the Scorsese films. So that was sort of like the first time I started thinking about filmmakers, and that sort of mm. thing. So. I don't know. Sometimes something in there. In terms of making the foot this way, um, 
I don't know, just indie movies, I guess. You know, the British office was big at the yeah. time. And I remember thinking like, oh, this is super simple and yeah. it's just a character thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you like like Jarmusch shit? Do you like like fishing with John and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, or I like, like fishing with John. Yeah, I like all that stuff. Yeah. And like Trees Lounge? Uh, I don't even know if I've seen that. With Buscemi? Yeah. yeah. I think that's so that's fucking good. Did, did, did Jarmusch direct that one? I thought that I don't was think, a, I don't think Jarmusch did that. I think Buscemi I'm jumping around. That. Oh, Buscemi directed it? He yeah. might have. I could be wrong. Don't don't fucking skewer me. Jarmusch's, Jarmusch's films are great, but sometimes you get caught in one and you're like, what's happening? You don't know. You know, like I'm not going to. Some of them are really good and some of them I get lost in, but that's kind of the deal, right? Yeah. I like, mean, he's, yeah. He's like great, the, but he's not my favorite, I would say. Right. You know? Yeah. Ghost no. Dog. I like Ghost Dog. You like Ghost Dog? You seen Ghost yeah, Dog? Yeah. Ghost Dog's cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, Ghost Dog's chill. Yeah. So Rizzo. what about comedies? <laughs> what about comedies? Like, what are your, what are your comedies that inspired you that like just made you fucking, you know, lose it as a kid? I mean, I get like, I never, I've never been like Mr. Comedy. I don't watch a lot of comedies or anything like that. Honestly, like when I talk about Scorsese, that's like this kind of stuff. That <laughs> Jody's, me, Jody's been making serious dramas the whole time because <laughs> accidentally are comedies. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't, he's know, like, I don't know why people are laughing. It's a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, like uh, scary movie two is the best movie ever made. Yeah. yeah. Other movies make me laugh. You know, I like um like Alexander Payne, like that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. like you know, like yeah. funny, but maybe a little I don't know if you do you call them a comedy? Is that a comedy? So I, I mean, yeah. They're yeah. they're like they're, they're comedic in a very not in a slapstick way. Yeah. It's more like that's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't like and dark. broad comedy too much or right. anything like that. And then how did you get from like foot fist way? Like all of a sudden you make that fucking movie, you get it distributed. Yeah. And then like observe and report was your next one. Yeah. Um, so that was observed before Eastbound. Um, so it was sort of, okay. So we shot the pilot for Eastbound. Then I shot observe and report and then shot the rest of the season of Eastbound and down once it got picked up. So it was sort of all together around the same time. Um, how did I get there? I don't know. So foot fist way didn't sell right at Sundance. And what happened is it ended up getting passed around Hollywood and like, uh, like Will Ferrell and Adam McKay, that's how we got hooked up with those guys. And like Judd Apatow, Seth Rogen, a bunch of these dudes kind of saw it and were passing it around uh, to each other. Like and, a child in, yeah. in Hollywood. Right. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> you and I. Just like, you're like, here's a new baby. And everyone's like, let me suck its dick. Yeah, that's right. like, Maddie, give me that going, new baby dick. Maddie, I don't know what happened to you, but you're going ham today. And I fucking love it. Yeah. You, this is the most unhinged. We're not bleeping any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most unhinged. What do you mean? Uh, nothing. No, everyone I'll, I'll in New York, everyone is, is do, in LA. They suck all the kids' dicks. Yeah, all my friends are doing that. Yeah, it's part of the deal. <laughs> they get in, uh, in the gates of Hollywood. Yeah. They're like, he's, you want the movie on Netflix? Yeah. You gotta suck the little yeah. kids. He's a dicky. he's a Hollywood guy. He's yeah. definitely busted some nuts and some uh, infants. Yeah. So, and that's how you get observant report. <laughs> that's how you get observant <laughs> report. That's, yeah. too that's too far. That's too far. That's too far. Um. And then let so, me ask you so a question. So what did you, you have to do? You had to go to a spirit soup fucking dinner to sell the first movie or what? What's, what's, what's a spirit soup? You know, soup? your best friend, Marina Ab Abram Abramovich. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, do you still get money off of uh, Observing Report or, or Foot Fist Way? Do you get residuals still somehow? Oh, I never made any money on Foot Fist Way. Um, I get just, residuals on Observing Report. You do? Yeah. You get like a little check here and there? You're like, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's not a lot yeah, yeah. at this point. It's just like a 35K check every 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 two weeks. Oh, like, not oh, even... <laughs> Puts in a shredder. <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking wipes his ass with it. Oh, didn't even know that was there. Yeah. Huh. yeah. I like um, that. Yeah. <laughs> Mail, mailbox. Well, how, how, how did you meet? What's that guy's name from Roseanne? The Dan, Daniel Glover? Or what's his? Uh, yeah, Daniel Glover. That's the guy the, from Roseanne. John Goodman? The, uh, Dan, John Goodman. He's a good guy, eh? Yeah, yeah, he's great. Um, we, I mean... <laughs> Through his agent, I guess. <laughs> oh, Maddie, when they when they cast a film, <laughs> unlike a podcast, there's a process. There's a casting agent. And they get a guy and they go, "Do you want this guy?" And that guy goes, "Maybe I'll do it." How many people? But no way. John Goodman was the guy. It's not like you're gonna have any. Like there was. Like you guys have the vision, right? Oh and yeah, no, we like we, the casting. Oh, yeah. did you write it for him? Well, uh, no, not really. But we wanted him. The whole you time. wanted he him. He was like number one. Yeah. So can yeah. we talk about possible? You got him. Go ahead. He, he's funny. Yeah, he's great. He's amazing, actually. Yeah. He's really... <laughs> John Goodman is a good actor. Did you see him in the Cohen in the he, Cohen Brothers why, film? Uh, why are you guys being so weird? Did he kill somebody? Everyone's like, John, he's great. He's great. <laughs> he's great. John Goodman is great. He I mean, is a good guy. Raising is, Arizona. This is a hot take, but John Goodman's <laughs> John really Goodman good. is number one. Yeah, he's great. 
Uh, I don't know. Raising why Arizona is a great film. Raising Arizona is a great film. Is he in that one? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Have you ever worked with Nicolas Cage? <laughs> Have you ever worked with Nicolas Cage, Jody? The Coen Brothers are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys, have you ever seen There uh, There Will Be Blood by the Coen Brothers? Yeah. It is a great yeah. film. Yeah, they really directed that well. <laughs> my, my left foot inspired Foot Fist foot Way. Foot Fist Way. My left foot yes. fist way. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty much the same movie. It's a, yeah. <laughs> I've actually never seen it. I've, what, my left foot? Yeah, I've never uh, actually yeah. watched it. Is it the guy who did it's My great. Beautiful Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah, Red Shoe Diaries. Oh man, we're devolving pretty well, fast. Eastbound here. Down. So then no, we no, no, no. So so let's get it back on track. Let's, let's get, get back it back on track. Bound so you're down. 16 years old. You have yeah. a credit card. You made Foot Fist Way. Right. Then you're in the big city of L.A. Right. Bring bring it. Like what what um you know by the time you're 36, you're making Eastbound or Principles. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. See, this is. <laughs> This is why call, they call him the, the Charlie Rose of podcasting. He just gets in there. He asks you the pressing questions. <laughs> He's really getting into your psyche, Jody. He goes, you yeah. made a foot. There's a foot. There's a diary. and then because you know what's going through his head is just like he's just thinking about six other things. He's about cheeseburgers, buying his, his his son Mac a new mini Yukon, how how big the beats are in his house, how how quick he can go away from this podcast and take a shit. You're like fourth, fifth, sixth in his mind. Yeah. I don't know what to answer. Um, That's about right. Right. Okay. So yeah, then um, then everything just started <laughs> happening. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So no, but wait, for, okay. Doing? Sorry. I I sold. Wait, what did I do? I sold. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I got a second credit card. I sold and then and <laughs> things happened and. Uh, so they presented me with three children. One was Cambodian, right. one was Lithuanian, and one was Greek Orthodox. And they yeah. said, which one of these children you fuck will define your path yeah. in Hollywood? And he went Lithuanian, and here yeah. he is. Yeah. I ch yeah. So right up the middle. Not the best one, not yeah. the worst one. Yep, yeah. exactly. No. <laughs> That's a good... So this is Jody Hill. He is an Oscar winner for his TV show, <laughs> Vice Principals. Yeah. And you can see his new movie, Horrible Bosses 3. Yep. Coming nice. out soon. <laughs> nice. My microphone stand is like literally broken. We didn't. We didn't even. We didn't even talk Eastbound and Down yet, which we will. I'm gonna jump over Eastbound and Down, okay. and I'm gonna go to Vice Principals. Okay. Because I gotta tell you, yes. I rewatched re it. I rewatched. I rewatched Eastbound and Down. And I rewatched Vice Principals oh. in this quarantine. Thanks, like, bud. I, yeah, dude. Yeah. I called Jody. I go, bro. I I call. I was like, listen, Eastbound and Down is by far just one thing alone, right? The fucking the the confederate flag marijuana boogie board that shit that thing alone should be put in the fucking loop like it is so insanely i can't say it's retarded and fucking crazy and just can't say that i did say it and it's just so emblematic of that character i don't know I, that thing stuck in my mind as just like the most insane artifact but um i rewatched the whole i said i was i said i was gonna jump forward but i went back i rewatched the whole eastbound and down <laughs> All the way to the very end, where he like he gets his final, um, he gets his final like he gets the final big win, and he gets his own TV show. And in true Jody Hill fashion, it gets so fucking dark in the last few episodes, <laughs> right? Like where he, he sees just, his life, yeah, flash in front of him. yeah, yeah. It just gets so fucking dark, and he, everything crumbles. And it's just like <laughs> to watch a guy on a show wildly build this thing up, and every time just take a shit on it. It was just like. I can't even, I don't know. There's so much to unpack. That here. whole ending started with him, like in his fantasy, he still outlives his wife. Like he never pictured. Oh, right. <laughs> like, that was, that was, we were coming up with it. Like, there's no way he pictures dying before his wife. And right, know, that right, would, right. That would be like a, something too selfless. So he has to like, he, uh, he frames it as like a, 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 a rise and fall and then rise again. <laughs> he's like a story. great white hunter in yeah. Africa and just like surrounded by tribes. I mean, it's like, it's so, it's so, I don't even know if there was it's it's even post politically correct because I feel like when something's that funny, it's undeniably like you can't go back and look at something and say like, oh well this is fucked up. Like it's just like it's very obviously a parody of that person and it's very obviously like a hilarious thing to do. And I think that there's people that see it from my perspective that love it. And I'm sure that there's people that think he's just a sick dude. Like I'm sure there's people in the South who are like that dude's right on, you know, like they probably think that he's it like, is, yeah. That's they don't like, see the irony, right? Like No, we have like uh most people do. Most people get it. And, um, you know, we've never really 
taken much shit for it because I think most people get that ultimately like this guy is who we're sending up more than more than all his targets, you know? Yeah. But uh but yeah, we'll definitely have some people come up to us who are like, fuck yeah, man, I'm like Kenny Powers. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not a good thing yeah. it's not a good thing it's a bad thing to be like kenny yeah <laughs> but it's it's amazing to have a character well, we all have a little bit of kenny in us i feel we wish yeah uh, it, it's amazing to have a character that can be that like kind of like on paper it loathsome yeah. but you're rooting you want this dude to win no matter what the fuck he does <laughs> you want him to rise up and win like you just it doesn't matter what the fuck he does you want this guy to win every time because he's so good at being like the most lovable prick, right? Like it's yeah. just that was it, like it, it, it's that, that was gonna know. say that was that was when like you said the observer report rape scene, right? And kind of <laughs> you know the kid just Kenny Powers, like that was something when we first started that we were super into was like trying to push, um, like all these characters in comedy kind of right before that, the wave that came up were like really nice guys at heart and all this kind of stuff. And oh, we yeah. were trying to make stuff of like, what if it's like a movie about a fucked up person, like a person that's not, a, a, you know, doesn't like have no great redeemable morals. Factors. And, yeah, and just doesn't like- Doesn't have a you, compass. Yeah, exactly. And like, can you still watch a movie or make an artistic piece about somebody like that? So I think, you know, sometimes we went too far maybe, but like, that's like what we were like pushing on the whole time with all that stuff. What? And then what is it like, honestly, like how much is written and versus like, how much are you guys like improv and like, just like keep running the scene and you're like, go wilder, go w say something like, are you pushing? Like, it's just yeah. like, in my mind, it'd be like, I say something crazier. Good. Yeah. We, um, it's all written. Like we write, uh, probably too much writing to be honest with you, like draft after draft. But, um, but then like, I think you have to do that. And then you can get like little bits of good stuff that come out of it. That's that's what we yeah. usually do. It's like work real hard at it. It's so crazy because like in my mind, like I'm watching this stuff. I'm like, man, I bet they're doing like 50 takes and they're just like a different take every time. But it's like, that's so amazing that you're like, yeah. you have that completely written out because it's just like even, um, you know, writing even just cookbooks or recipes, yeah. you know, and the editing that goes into that constantly yeah. is such a thing where it's just like, but the, 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 the actual, the, like the comedy is so strong yeah. with you guys. Like it's so quick and back and forth. And it's so just like, how many books everything have you read about it is like, it, even like <laughs> Eastbound, like even like watching him, like interact with all the kids, like having that vision yeah. of walking it, like how many characters in fucking Eastbound are like based off like childhood stuff or like, even like, I don't even know, man. Like it is so fucking perfect. What, like him just chirping kids is the best thing in the world. Yeah. A lot of, uh, I mean, like a lot of like just Kenny Powers is based off like assholes we saw in the South, like that sort of thing that we would make yeah. fun of and send up. It's an amalgamation um, of just all white dudes from the South. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like guys that used to bully us and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how many books have you written? Two? One? Two. Two. Wow. Oh, Two. That's cool. Is it hard? It, um, the first one I wrote my whole life yeah. through like a culinary lens through like my family members and myself and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it was kind of easy in the respect. Once I figured out the format mm -hmm. and like everything where I'm like, I'm going to have like 25 recipes and 25 stories from, um, you know, my grandparents, both sides. Then I'm going to do my parents. Then I'm going to do my in-laws. And they're all different kind of like, you know, my in-laws are Irish and Italian. My parents are very just like Canadian. Yeah. Um, my grandparents are Acadians. And so it was just like writing all these different recipes and then getting into restaurants and stuff like that. It was kind of, yeah. It was easy because I was just writing literally just my life. I was just like journaling and writing about different times, different vibes. Like yeah. th these dishes represent these times throughout my life. Um, and then I went into like culinary school where I got into like heavy drugs. And, and then I go into like chefs where I got into like really big drugs and all that kind of stuff. So it was just like one of those things that that was even then my second book is just like a fucking just like a, a home cooking cookbook where it's just like. Yeah. You know, not typical. I don't think it is typical, but it's more of like, um, you know, starting with stocks, breads, pickles, preserving, vegetable yeah. cooking, smoking, grilling, dessert, like a very kind of like start to finish kind of cookbook. But it's it's like, but it is still very, it, it's insane to write. Like I had a helper with my, with recipes, yeah. um, just be writing recipes and stuff like that. And then, and then, but writing just like, you know, it's, 135 recipe like the second book's almost 400 pages yeah and so it's just like wow it is uh it's a lot yeah that's cool yeah 
You hate I really this, want right? to do you a hate, movie. You hate though. that he's talking about cooking and cookbooks. And I, stuff. You know, it's just it's a food mm-hmm. podcast about it's film. Very, it's not a. <laughs> It's a it's a graffiti hiking podcast that sometimes has food in it with film. It's a food. It's well, a you film. need food to hike. You need food, and yeah. you need to hike to stay fit, and you need yeah. movies to be happy. Is there something interfering with your happiness, or is preventing you from achieving your goals? Um, yes, I've had. Uh, I've I used to have a hard time doing anything. When I was a child, mm. I couldn't even. I can see that. I I could not do anything. I couldn't even get from my house to go buy a shower curtain. Uh, I was paralyzed with um, I don't know what it was, anxiety or fear or depression. But I literally could not achieve a task. And uh, you know, um, that's a psychological issue, and that can be fixed. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. It's professionals counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants to start living wants you to start living a happier life today. today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash PTA. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for podcast name, which is Powerful <laughs> Truth Angels. <laughs> Special offer, special offer for Powerful Truth Angel listeners. Come on, angels, let's listen up. You can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash PTA. That's BetterHelp.com forward slash PTA. BetterHelp.com forward slash PTA. Again, BetterHelp.com forward slash PTA. If you're suffering from the abuse of an aggressive co-host who accuses you of snorting and dying in your sleep and you need to talk to a licensed therapist online because you don't want to go into an office and catch covid call these people they will help you out so you don't die Wait, is, hi- is hiking your new thing hiking's always been my thing i've been okay. hiking yeah dude he I mean, wears a utility vest he weighs a he wears a weight vest do you really he looks like a fucking yeah. ultra military yeah. fucking weirdo hiking through like a 50 fucking pound weight vest. Feelers. you wear a 50 pound weight vest yeah but Jesus. someone stole that in my car i'm like some some fucking meth head stole my weight oh, vest. I'm like why do you want to steal a fucking weight vest it's insane yeah. probably thought it was a bulletproof vest yeah they're like we can get something for this <laughs> um so yeah, we did a we did a show. What'd you just do, two tone? I scratched my. Did finger. you go jerk off? No, I went to. I piss. I, I took a piss. Uh, I had to. I, oh, I, was, my, I, I had to. Sorry, I didn't interrupt the flow of the show. But um, we did a. Um, what's you're out? You're out in five minutes, right, Jody? What time is it? It's one twenty-seven. Well, you have a hard one out. Four. Yeah, I have a hard out. I have to go to the West Side. Sorry, oh we, didn't even, we didn't. We so didn't really t- get into. Quickly talk us through what the the process of making <laughs> righteous gemstones. <laughs> We didn't even get through vice principles. I'm just gonna do my ten seconds. Vice principles is fucking hilarious. Thank you. I I I go watch it. I don't know if you don't know East Mountain Down, then like East Mountain Down is part of the lexicon, right? Like people people refer to Kenny Powers still to this day in me, you know, just in Kenny Powers you, is is the white Dave Chappelle. Am I wrong? Like you know, like that kind of <laughs> references, like the amount of people that. No, but like the references of like how Chappelle hated oh, his see, life because everyone would like fuck your couch or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That, Kenny Powers is the same kind of thing. Like you can still go to a bar and I guarantee in any single bar around the world, there's going to be one idiot in there that's going to say something like, oh, I bumped my nose or yeah. you know, whatever. Hurt my <laughs> yeah. nose. Like, psych your like, mind. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where, do, like where does psych like, your mind come from? Psych your mind? Yeah. That was something you say as kids. Really? Yeah. Psych like your mind. <laughs> You never heard that? You didn't no. know? Oh. I heard it first on East I thought that was like down. a classic. Like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just sounds so crazy. Like, psych your mind. Psych, psych your mind. We did psych. We didn't do psych your mind. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. Um, cool. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, 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 <laughs> you want, Jody. So yeah. now, 
Um, this is the time in the podcast. Um, you know, we're powerful truth angels here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want you to give our angels, like if somebody has a credit card and wants to make a film, what's the best advice? Oh, uh, well, if they have a, just make a film. Yeah. If they have a credit card and they want to make a film, I'm, I'm giving advice. Yeah. Seriously. Make a film, get a credit card, make one. It doesn't matter how cheap it is. When we, when I made for this way, the only thought, the only goal I had was like to be able to make another film afterwards and anything else that happened with it was gravy. So yeah, I would say definitely. It's like a calling a card. You're, it's, it's, like, it's like a portfolio you spent the money on, right? That's it. Like just like, yeah. And it worked though. Yeah. But 35 I mean, try grand. To make, try to make it a good film. You know, yeah, make yeah. it something you're proud of. But yeah, yeah it, hopefully it's good enough that maybe you don't have to pay for the next one. 35 grand is, is, is so cheap. I mean, how- With digital, you can definitely- do it for cheap now. Right? I mean, you yeah. can that's the thing now. The technology you can just literally grab if you if you're smart and you can write. Look at Tangerine. You, they made it on the iPhone. All on iPhones. Yeah. Or if you yeah. you could get a couple yeah. iPhones to sit in the house and make a fucking movie if you really want to. Yeah. And if it's funny or if it's well written, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Look at South Park. It's construction paper. Duplass Brothers. I'm friends with those Duplass dudes. Brothers. They made, they made their first few yeah. films were made on nothing. Yeah, I read their uh, Avatar. I listened to their audiobook. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did Avatar. And then they did Avatar <laughs> on iPhones. <laughs> Avatar yeah. was made for like Two, they had two cre two capital ones. Yeah, two credit they had two, cards. Like fifteen K capital <laughs> yeah. ones. Yeah, they had maybe four four iPhone sixes and like just you know a green screen. They did it. That's how they ripped it off. <laughs> they you had know, they one just... makeup artist. It was kind of yeah. chill. She started early. Yeah, Sam Jones was a makeup artist from Atlanta. Or, Sam Jones was <laughs> or from uh, from Carol North Carolina. Hey, you know my white buddy. <laughs> yeah. <The hot> um, <laughs> Jody, we're gonna have to have you on. This is gonna be yeah. multi course. Okay, great. Neil. We're Thanks gonna have you back me. on because we're gonna we're we're gonna get a lot. We're sucking people in on our film podcast, Great. so we're gonna have you know um, we're gonna get. To, have you ever met Martin? Have you ever met Marty? Scorsese? Marty Scorsese? No, Mar <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> no, I don't. They call know Marty. Marty. I thought yeah. all his buddies called Marty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I've never met him. And Judd Apatow, he's a nice guy. He is does, a nice guy. Yeah, does Scorsese really nice know? Guy. Does Scorsese know that Foot Fist Way is Goodfellas too? Is yeah. he aware of that? I, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Is, I <laughs> yeah. mean, he might not be aware. I'm gonna of that. email him. Okay. I'm gonna email Marty. Yeah. I'm gonna send him a Dropbox of right. screenshots from the movie. He'll get the gist. Right. I'll say hey to Judd for you. Yeah. Tell Judd. Yeah, I'm trying to do a comedy special. I got a good idea. You do. What's a comedy no. special? I want, well, I'm about, dude, I'm about to do a uh, virtual oh. like book tour thing yeah. where I'm, I'm going to be giving, me and my buddy are going to make a movie um, in my hometown of me just driving around and I'm going to tell all the stories of like, you know, the first time I fingered somebody, this is where my brother <laughs> beat up that guy. And we're going to go around to all the train tracks and like tell all these stories. That's great. But it's called Trust Tree Tour. Yeah. And we're going to give a little home tour thing, um, you know. Uh, Netflix is a joke is biting, but you know, we'll see. Oh, that's great. Um, is it yeah, bad? Is well, it, I'll talk is to it, is it bad form to discuss who's interested in your project while it's up in the air? Cause it might get, there's nobody's know, interested. Think? Nobody's, I'm, I'm, there's nobody that's interested. I'm, okay, I'm asking I, no, Jody. I'm not talking to you. I'm asking Jody. Is it bad? Form? Is it bad luck to say so-and-so is interested when, you know, things are so kind of mercurial, uh, in this world. Right? Nobody's interested. You in just anything. said Netflix is a joke is interested. You said they're That's biting. Like, don't, oh. Are you kidding me? You can't even. Nobody cares about me. What are you talking? I'm I mean, on a podcast. Like, what are you talking about? Nobody cares. You can make food you shows on YouTube. That, I guess. I don't know. I'm just talking shit. I mean, maybe it depends on how interesting. It's like they saying, are. like, it's like saying, "Hey, I met this girl. I, I think it's gonna really go good." <laughs> and you, and you're like calling your, yeah. you're, you're calling like, your, I had a good meeting at Miramax. <laughs> yeah. I had a good you're meeting at your Miramax. Grand slam, you're like, I think this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, it probably depends on which stage you're at. You yeah. Know? yeah. So yeah. what are you what are you working on next? Last qu what what's next for Jody Hill? Um, you know, what's next for Jody Hill? I have some things, but uh just writing right now. I have a couple of projects that um I'm working on, but kind of want to keep them under wraps a little bit, but Godfather four. Yeah. <laughs> Step Brothers <laughs> Step Brothers three. Yeah, I'm making a the third film that my buddy made before the second one <laughs> the original uh, you know what you know what's a funny here i when i did my very first the this is gonna sound stupid but the very first time i did jimmy kimmel yeah i fucking i did a cooking segment and uh will ferrell and um uh what's his buddy his best buddy's name the guy john c Riley. john c Riley. john c Riley. they yeah. were there 
uh, promoting the the Sherlock Watson, the, the Sherlock Holmes Watson oh, thingy. Gotcha. And we got to take a we took a photo like with everybody that was on the show, <laughs> and it was just like I dressed like normal, so like they were in like like full outfits yeah. for like the thing, and then I was literally wearing like this. What yeah. a great! And it was like great that ending end. story for to send Jody <laughs> off on. That was really cool. Hey, you guys. So I know. <laughs> I got I got a figure. And then Will Ferrell. <laughs> Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell, I tell the story, and then Will Ferrell, I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm Maddie," and he was just like, "Okay," <laughs> and I was just like, "Okay, thanks." But I talked to John C. Riley because we have a common friend, and 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 then I dropped. I was just like, "Oh yeah, you used to model for Extra Large with Beastie Boys." I was like, "That was pretty cool." Yeah. Anyway. So Jody, That's so cool. next up is just secret <laughs> missions. Yeah. And secret so missions. Jody's got a lot of secret stuff that he's writing a lot. Yep. Uh, new season of Righteous Gemstones gonna be shot soon. Nice. Yep. Nice. In Carolina. Clap on podcasts. Yep. Nice. That show's amazing. My favorite character Thanks, is the man. fucking raver guy. Oh, oh, Keith. The the Keith gospel, Solid. The, yeah, the devil worshiper. Yeah. He's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah, he Love comes around. So he comes around sometimes. I'll introduce you to him. Maybe. He's around. Oh yeah, that. yeah, he's around. He looks yeah. twisted. I like that guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have to release Jody. That's it. Sorry, guys. Okay, Jody. Thank thanks you for having for me on. on. Yeah. Nice Dude. to meet you, Maddie. Yeah. Jody, uh, I can't, my guy. It's thank COVID, you so much. So I can't give you. We can do it. We do okay. an elbow. Boop. All right. Boom. All right thank elbow you. Me. Elbow, elbow me. Elbow me. Thanks, Jody. We'll thank have you back Jody. on. We're going to talk about your new <laughs> projects right. later. Bye, thanks, Jody. Thanks, Jody. Dude. Bye, Jody. Yeah, next time uh, if we get him back, we'll see. It's a big if. We just we just dedicate we dedicate the whole episode towards uh, for for just 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 talking about Eastbound. You, that was the coolest guest we've ever had on. You think so? Easily, he's the coolest guy ever. Oh, he's still there. Still he's there, easily yeah. the coolest guy. We're still recording. Let's go. I love him so much i'm gonna i'm gonna you know you never pitch somebody first time you meet him so next time i'll, I'll pitch him you're gonna pitch him really big ideas you're gonna pitch him on making a film for you <laughs> i was like let's make a chef movie the ultimate anti-hero chef movie right you're like it's about um, me i'm a dark chef i do drugs <laughs> i'm basically i'm basically uh eastbound and down as a chef yeah, like we take Eastbound and Down, but then we make it a chef. Yeah, he's a chef. Instead of instead of Major League Baseball, it's Major League your cooking. Ideas. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone's idea is always like, it's your movie, but it's my movie. Yeah, and Jody's such a nice guy. He'd be like, you know, that, that's that's cool, you know. Uh, you know, that's a really good idea, Maddie. And then he just walks away. He's like, he's fucking assholes. Yeah, uh, he just blocks my number. Jody's been chewing Nicorette for about ten years. Also, by the way, I saw him pull out his Nicorette, and I wanted to, I wanted to give him a little chirpity chirp, but uh, I didn't get a chance to slide in there. You really, I gotta I tell love... you, I gotta tell you, uh, not to cut you off, but you you did a real good job of interviewing today. I Do you, you some, think so? Yeah, I think you're. I was really surprised at the frequency and at the uh the 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 crafted nature of those questions because you're you i wanted to talk more i think it was uh, just like it's so funny i want to i actually want him to come back because i want to talk to him about like i want to like get into like filmmaking because i think it's like interesting the way he's the thing about jody that i think is like really the coolest is that he's made everything that he's made is fucking good right so he's making everything his way and that's the thing yeah. that I wanted. Obviously, uh, we're being dumb dums, and I'm a dumb dumb. But it's just like, I think it'd be cool for him to come on and like genuinely talk about like, hey, oh, he's still literally in the house. Oh my god, he can't so, hear you. He can't hear you. Oh, okay. Bye, Jody. Do you know what else is the best? Huh. He kind of looks like Aphex Twin. Dude, I forgot to bring this up. You know that? Okay, you know that movie Days of Confused. <laughs> yeah. You seen it? Yeah, he looks okay. like Slater. No, is that the kid? It's the kid who's the little kid who's like the guy that goes through the whole movie with the long hair. He looks yeah, just yeah. like that kid. He doesn't like it. Look, he, he just keeps like walking he in and out. This is incredible. <laughs> he keeps <laughs> he keeps coming in and out of the shot. He hates. I don't think he likes when I say he looks like that guy. Hey, Jody, do you do you hate when I say you look like the guy from Days and Confused? Oh man, I've heard that all my life. He's heard it his whole life. He hates it. Um, well, he looks oh, like that got, kid. <laughs> we have ads. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> He just did it. He just did this thing. Why? He did the you hair? You gotta pop that in, Jason. 
Because the, guy, the kid goes like this the whole time. He just did it look just like him. Maddie came in. Maddie was on fire today. I haven't seen this Maddie since... since Dude, I've been spiraling for three months. Bro. I know I you have. Good. I know. I'm, I haven't seen you this engaged. I actually feel good. And I don't feel like... Um, I don't. I was just. In a, I'm, dude. I've been bumming for fucking. I know I've you've been, been bumming. I know you've been hurting, and uh, I, I'm sorry that. Have, have Have you been talking to a shrink? Has that helped? Or do yeah, you know, dude. I've I've had like. You've had some therapy. Six. Yeah, I've done like six sessions. It's really nice. You know, one of our advertisers. I didn't realize that therapy is literally just talking, and I was just like, oh, okay. You're like, yeah, uh, it's talking about yourself to a person who can't go anywhere. So, you might excel in yeah, this. Yeah, talking to yourself, and then and then I'm just like, so what do you got to say? And they're like, and times up. Bye, yeah. Maddie. Yeah. Like, how do you like, feel? What? You're basically paying someone yeah, I'm to just be like, the. Can you help me? And she. It was so funny. My therapist. She was just like straight up. She was like, how much time do you have to um, to read books? And I was just like. I'm paying you like 300 bucks an hour. You read the books. Right. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I was like, there's no time. I'm like time to read books. Yeah. I like when, when I'm sleeping, like yeah. I don't have, like I got to figure it out. But I was like, I was like, is there books like on tape? I can listen to them. She's like, can you read I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. And also chicken soup for the soul. You can knock those out before our next session. Dude, literally, I was I bought the like subtle art of not giving a fuck or whatever. The yeah. Sub, like, and I'm listening to it. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing all the things that this guy's saying. It's just like whatever. Right. It's just, it's so funny. Like every it's 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 a very funny thing. Have you ever read that book or like listened to it? No. What is that about? It's it's like about I don't know. I can't. I don't even fucking know. I listened to the first five chapters and I was just like. This guy just sounds like he's like, don't worry about the small stuff. And you're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. The whole book is like, don't worry hey, about Ange. the small stuff, pretty much. Hey, Ange. Can you take her out, please? Yeah. Um, okay, let's do uh, these ad reads. And um, I, I got to poop. Once again, he has to shit. Well, I hold it in. This is my poop time. This I is guess. poop time. This is when he poops. Okay, well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you were here. I'm glad that you were present. I'm glad you had a good time on the pod because the past, you know, and we're five gonna or pod six tomorrow. We're gonna pod tomorrow. In the past five or six pods, you literally look like you were in a your head was in a vice, and it's just like you know, it sucks for everybody. It fucks sucks for you. It sucks for everybody. It's horrible, and it's not good yeah. for your brain. You know, so I'm glad you got a little relief because times is hard. 